Hello, welcome to Young Martin's Reels. Uh, today, we were supposed to be working on this reel. Actually, it was two days ago. This was a Shakespeare Alpha. And when I went to take this screw out right here, uh, the entire top assembly of this thing crumbled. It just disintegrated from just corrosion. So um, the Shakespeare Alpha that I was going to do, and here's a picture of it. Yeah, that's what it looked like, and it had a lot of salt water damage. I did manage to get the cover off, but when we went to take this apart, this was all just completely disintegrated. The dissimilar metal corrosion in this corner just really got to it and just ate it away. So the that one's gone. All right, so back to this one. That was actually two days ago. Yesterday, we did the Shakespeare... 1797 today we're going to do the shakespeare 1799 uh that's this one that's one that's missing the cover and if anybody out there has a cover for a shakespeare 1799 that they'd be interested in selling please let me know um, i'm interested in getting this reel up and going completely and that's it all right first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the spool the sorry the spinner head off of this this one doesn't come off the way the one yesterday did. It comes off completely different with a screw on the end. There we go. So we take our screw off, pull that off. All right, now our spool, if you notice inside here, see these two posts? Those two posts are what hold the spool in. If you take the post and rotate it clockwise, and then pull out, that spool comes off. Now these posts are gonna take this spool and move it up and down. Oh, you'll see more of that when we get to it. Now take your handle off. Let's go ahead and take your star drag knob off. And we've got a big nut there we gotta take off. And I don't know that I have the wrench for that. Just a second. I do not. Stand by. Okay, I'm going to do what I tell you to never do, and let's use a pair of vice grips on this. And uh, if you're going to do something like that, be very, very gentle. I just am lazy and didn't feel like going downstairs and getting the wrench. I knew it wasn't going to be very tight. Okay, we've got that off. All right, and we have... This washer right here that fits on, that's going to fit underneath your drag washer. And it looks, looks to be a collar on there, but I think we'll wait on that. Next thing we're going to do is take off these three screws. All right, there's the side plate off. Now, this has an anti-reverse, but it doesn't have a disengageable anti-reverse. So it's not one that you can take off. Okay, take that washer off. Slide this out. And it has a very unique anti-reverse spring. All right, see this spring? Look at that. And now it is back together. Okay. All right, when we took that out, it uh, created some issues I had to figure out. So one of the things was how, to, how this anti-reverse goes back together. And um, first off, if you're over here just trying to wind this, it has a tendency to want to just turn. And it's uh, because the drag is not on it. Um, so... When you go to take this off right here, this anti-reverse is going to slip out. And I'm going to teach you how to put it back. I had to spend a few minutes figuring it out myself, but uh, I got there. And uh, we're going to slip this out now, now that I figured out how to put it back together. And what's going to happen when we pull this out, the anti-reverse um, spring is going to slip off of the shaft. And when that does, you're going to sit there and look at it and go, how in the world am I supposed to put that back together? Well, we're going to show you how to do it how to make it happen. Um, put this down. And lift that off. There you go. And then the 
this comes on out. We're going to be taking this anti-reverse dog off and putting it back. I believe we will anyway. I've had to to do it before. All right, this is our anti-reverse spring right here. It goes on in this in this direction right here. Just like that in that groove. Okay, and it's going to ride over here. And it's going to ride on this anti-reverse dog right here. And as it goes, when it's going one direction, when you're rotating forward, it's just going to sit in place just like this. When you go to, to reverse wind, it's going to come down. Well, it's going to pull down. And when it pulls down, it's going to take this anti-reverse dog right here and push it into these teeth. All right. So we've got this out. Now we're going to see if we can get the uh, drag system out of here. Okay. There's a drag washer here. And a spring. I don't believe there's a washer. Nope, that's just the spring. Okay, this is the other one over here. That one fits on top of that, like so. Okay, when this comes out, everything here is just dry as a bone. All right, this is our drag washer right here, and it is adhered on there. So. We are going to see if we can take that off. All right. We're going to see if we can get this to slide off of here without tearing it up. Part of you wants to leave this alone because you're afraid you'll damage it, but the other part of you says it has to come off because your drag washer has got to be able to slide. Well, if it's all caked and glued to your drag assembly, it can't slide and you have no drag. So we're going to scrub that clean, get that off of there. And this shaft is going to come out of here, and there should be another drag washer. Yep, on this side right here. All right, that one's going to be a little more dip. Nope, that one's actually not stuck so bad. There we go, and it comes off. All right, that's your drag assembly. So we've got those pieces. They're going to go together just like this. This one here, this one here, this one on the back side. This one on this side and our spring. All right, now we're over to this side. And again, just like with the uh, 1799 or 1797 that we did yesterday, we've got our thumb button here and uh, it's spring loaded. And when you go to take that off, you're going to think, oh, how am I going to put that guy back in there? It's really not difficult. So we're going to go ahead and take it off now. We're going to take this other side off so we can take the button out. All right, as this side plate comes off, the spring falls out, just like it did yesterday, okay? And I'm going to teach you how to reinstall that spring back into the case and get the button up and running again. Okay, we've got the side plate off. We've got the button off. Now, this is a little more difficult. It takes a little bit of dexterity. Uh, what you can do, if you have a pair of hemostats, which I do, is you can pull this shaft down and you can put something on the shaft to keep from marring it like a green scrubby and then you can grab hold of the shaft so that you can hold it there all right now while you're holding that you can take this assembly out right here and you got to hold that shaft out because this has got to come all the way off. It can't come part of the way off. It's got to come all the way off. And what you'll find, there you go. Now you can get it out. Okay, that's got that assembly off. And remember, it goes in in this configuration right here. Okay, so if you're looking at it from the wind side, from the side that winds, it goes in just like that. Okay, so we'll remember that. Now, you can take this piece out. Slides right out. And it comes to right there, and that's as far as it's going to go. And if you look, we've got a C-clip right here. Let's zoom in. I like the zoom capability of this. All right, there's our C-clip right there. All right, what we're going to do is slide this down. Now, this part, you don't have to worry quite so much about marring. 
And what I'm going to do is slide it down like this and then clamp it like that. Okay, once I've done that, I can come up here and see about taking that C-clip off. Which should, let's zoom back in, just our out back a little bit, there we go. Which should be just a simple case of grabbing hold of it and pulling it out, but that washer's gonna be in the way, so that's gonna keep it from happening. Okay, which means we're gonna have to push it off. And many of you know, I hate little eclipse. There we go. Clip is off. There it is. Right there. Now, when we release this spring, it's going to want to jump. So be careful. Ease it out. Once you get it to that point, now you can pull this shaft out. Now, as you pull it out, that washer is going to drop off. And so is the spring. And your pinion gear, as well as another washer. Okay, so that first washer goes up here inside, and your pinion gear, then your spring, and your washer. Okay, I'm gonna lay that out for you. Axle shaft, washer, Pinion gear, spring, washer, and then E-clip. Just like that. That's how it's going to fit in there. Now, all this has already come off now. And the only thing we haven't looked at is the underside of this. And this one's not nearly as bad as the 1797 yesterday, but it's still pretty dirty. But it's nowhere near as bad as that one was. But we're going to clean that up. We're going to clean up the bottom of this. This is where those posts, see these two posts here? That's where they fit, and they lock in. So we'll clean that up. This is our drag shaft. This is the rest of the drag assembly with the drag spring. And I'm going to pause right here, and when I come back, all of our parts are going to be clean. Okay, well, that was a lot of fun. All right, we've got this apart like we had before. And we're going to take a little grease on the shaft. Slide the gear on. Okay, we've greased that. Now we're going to come back, slip on the spring. Well, you know what? It's pointless to do that until we can put it in. So let's go ahead. We're going to put... Oil on the main shaft, going in. And this was pretty grody. I had to do a little extra cleanup on this. So we got it clean. All right, there it goes. Now it's, it slides nice and smooth in there. We're going to install the washer next. That's the big heavy washer. It goes on. And then under that goes our pinion gear. Next on there will be the spring. Slide the spring on. Then comes that little bitty washer that you saw earlier. And that one I have to use hemostats on to get it on. because it's that small and my big clumsy fingers don't do so well with that. Okay, so let's take it up and get it to slip on. There we go. Once I've got that down, then I can slide it down and lock my hemostats back on. There's my C-clip. Take my C-clip and slip it on and that's got that reinstalled now notice that we don't have the grease on here yet 
We're gonna put that on the pinion gear shortly. But for now, that's enough. All right, now we're gonna go back to putting this piece on. This is on the wind side. And we're gonna slide this out as far or in as far as we can get it to go so that we can maneuver this back in. And all you gotta do is get that end up through there, but rotate it around so that this flat side up here is facing towards your uh, crank handle. Once you've done that, you can go ahead, let go of the center shaft and slide this back up into those two slots, like so. All right, that's gonna allow that to slide in and out. Now to lock that in place, we're gonna go ahead and slide the spool on. Let's put some grease on the spool, on the center of it, slide it in, and then line up those two posts with these two holes, and then turn it counterclockwise to lock it in place. And that's gonna hold that assembly in. At this time, we're ready to reassemble this crank assembly. Now, in cleaning, it was found that there's another piece inside here, like this, and it's gonna go, it's got this cutout, it's gonna go inside there with another cutout on the other side. So sit that inside there. Now, Take your shaft, and we're going to install the drag washer on there. Well, your drag washer needs to be lubricated. So put some grease on there. If you've got drag washer grease, that's a good thing to use. If you don't have any, that's okay. Use a regular grease. Once that greased, slide it on. Now this will slide inside your main gear assembly, like so, all right? And now, on the opposite side of that, we're gonna put your other drag washer, which you've lubricated now, with drag washer grease or a suitable sub. Once all that's on there, you should be ready to slide this on. Now the part that's missing at the moment is this spring assembly right here. We're gonna slide that on. It goes in this orientation, just like this. Okay, slide it down on there and it's going to fit over that shoulder right there. And that's where it'll sit. Once you've done that, now it's time to reinstall all of that back into here. And this is where things get a little complicated. Okay? You need to maneuver things so that this anti-reverse dog, let me wind this out just a little bit. There we go. Where this anti-reverse dog, it has to fit inside that loop right there while this stays on here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if we can maneuver this. I managed to do it earlier. Well, before we do that, let's go ahead and put some grease on this lobe right here, because that's going to ride inside your side plate. And we'll put some more grease inside there. Now, let's try to put this in. It took some maneuvering earlier to get it in, but I did manage. All right, the key is this loop has got to go on this side over here of this post right here, okay? But at the same time, it's got to go over this dog. And what I ended up doing last time is I pulled off this E-clip right here. like so, so that I could remove the shift dog. 
That now allows me to bring the loop to the other side of the post like that. And now I can take the shift dog and bring it inside that loop and fit it onto the post. If there's an easier way to do it, I don't really know it. It took me a little maneuvering to make that happen the first time. All right. And then once that is in place, set your E-clip back on. And I found that a little bit of grease helps it stay in place. And now I've managed to drop it inside there. There we go. That little bit of grease on that E-clip, get it in place, and then snap it back into place. And then let everything drop back in complete. All right, now it's not locking up right now, and the reason it's not locking is because our anti-reverse isn't tightened down. All right, so if we take and install our anti-reverse spring back in, like so, I don't think that gear went in all the way. There we go. Make sure that that cog went all the way down and slip your spring back in put your washer on and for the moment let's go ahead and tighten this anti-reverse back on if we can just to snug it down so that we can check our anti-reverse and make sure that it works Okay, as you tighten that down, now it's working. See there? I rotate it this way, and then when you back it up, it locks, and that's what it's supposed to do. Okay, we just needed this anti-reverse on to make that happen. We'll leave it on for the moment until we get this installed over here. Okay, so next, we're going to come back over here, and we need to get this pin. Oh, by the way. See this little collar in here? You do not want to lose that. All right. We're going to grease that so that it stays in place. And this is going to ride inside there. That will hold that in place. That's going, that little collar is going to ride in here, which is going to move this spool in and out. So turn or set this to about the medium point. Rotate your cam to where it's about in the middle and then see if you can't set this back down in there and get it to drop into place. If it drops into place, the spool should move up and down like that. If it's not in place, then it's not going to. All right, once you've got it in there, go ahead and put the screws in. All right, if you've got this installed properly, it should look like this. You should be able to rotate it around like so. All right, now what's going to try to happen is this piece here is going to try to slide back on you because we don't have the button installed yet. We'll take care of that in just a minute. In the meantime, let's go ahead and grease the pinion gear and the main gear.
And for good measure, crease your axle shaft where the spring slides in and out. All right. Now, crease these two posts right here that are going to slide your spool in and out. Okay, now I didn't make an empty promise. I told you that I would show you how to reinstall this button and spring assembly. So here we go. We're going to drop the spring in. Look at your spring, or drop your uh, button in. You take your spring. Your spring, if you look at it, has got a large end and a small end. We're going to take the, small, the large end where it's got this bend-out tab, and we're going to take that tab and stick it into that hole right there in the button. See that hole? With that in place, slide everything over just like that. Okay, your spring, make sure this end is inside. Now, if you notice, the spring does not fit over that hole it's sitting off to the side. Well, when we push this in and slide it over to the hole, that's going to load the spring so that it locks into place and gives you a spring action. Let's do it this way so we can see. So you can see it go in the hole. There you go. Get it started in the hole, then spin it around. Notice that you have a nice spring action again. Insert the screw. All right, now we're going to come back to our drag side. Now, we still need to put this nut and this washer on, so we're going to have to take this drag star uh, nut off. Put on the first washer. And it has a flat spot. You got to find the flat spot on the drag. To slide that on. It should be right there. There we go. Slide that on. And take your nut. And remember, this is the one I didn't want to use the vice grips on. If you do use vice grips or anything like that, whatever you do, don't crush it. This thing would very easily be crushed if you put too much pressure on it. Now, we can put our drag washer back on, our drag adjustment knob. And whatever you do, take your time on this. Don't get frustrated and cross-threaded. Because you can, and this should spin on just as easily as it's spun off. Like that. All right, that brings us down to our screw on the end. And our handle. And remember, this is not the right handle for it. As I stated yesterday, this is one that I had because the original looked like yeah there it is that was the original handle for this and uh, that was completely toast so i replaced it with this one which is a shakespeare handle but it's not the original shakespeare handle there we go let's test our drag there's our drag right there okay let's tighten our drag down as you guys know who've been watching me for a while I do make mistakes all right let's check our anti-reverse anti-reverse is working 
Okay, we're gonna have to hook on the pin. Okay, and it's still anti-reversing or uh, dragging. Still got drag. Still. Okay, that's a good drag. And we'll loosen it up so we don't squeeze all the grease out. All right, so there we have the Shakespeare 1799 that needs a cover in the worst kind of way. It's a nice little reel. Um, I got it from my dad, so I really want to hang on to this one. If any of you have a uh, have one of these that's got it that you have a good cover for that you would like to uh, sell me as a parts reel or just a cover, I would really like to be able to take this reel fishing again. And uh, if you like what you saw here today, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hey, that's understandable. I didn't exactly get things exactly right today. Um, uh, for my uh, troll out there who says, you're just guessing at things. Well, yes, yes, today I did guess a lot. and uh, But we did manage to get the reel back together and we got it functional. It just needs a new cover. And uh, if you'd like to subscribe, please hit the subscribe button. And for now, that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels, signing out.